Methamphetamine or meth on the streets is a harmful drug that is a terrible substitute for both ADH and obesity treatments. But its impact on human life continues to be a problem for both healthcare workers and law enforcement. The most notable region of this impact is right here at home in La Crosse, Wisconsin. But how does this affect our town and its workers who strive to end this drug epidemic? We've asked several people to find out. Our interviewer, Tim Elledge, interviewed Ms. Deb Stelmick, a local healthcare worker at Driftless Recovery Services, working to stop addictions such as meth and other hard drugs. And um, where is this place located? La Crosse, Wisconsin. We're on the corner of 5th and Main at 444 Main Street, up on 3rd floor. And what is your job and the main responsibilities that you provide? My job is a dual licensed counselor, which means I'm a counselor for both chemical health and mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and my responsibility is predominantly just individual therapy. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, I also do one group per week which is a relapse prevention group. Um, it is on Tuesday nights and runs from five to seven, and it runs for about eight to 10 weeks. And for this place being, what is, um, in the process of rehabilitation, what is the role of this place? Is to get them information, to do counseling, or is it just provide other resources for them? We do predominantly counseling, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's other resources as well. Some of the mm -hmm. folks that we get are in a spot where like the individual counseling isn't enough, Mm -hmm. or even the groups that we do aren't enough, they need the residential. Mm -hmm. um, we oftentimes will be that referral source, so somebody might come to us, whether it's of their own accord or a referral, say, from a hospital mm -hmm. or a referral from um, a legal situation, yes. um, attorneys, clinics, different places, um, and being able to help them kind of navigate that into a residential facility, because usually they have to have an assessment done first, so we do that criteria and help them in that process and get them there. That's awesome. Uh, um, what would someone who is seeking help receive here? And also, what would they like um, be looking forward to later in their journey? Um, and also, what would they kind of be avoiding in their journey as they kind of look for recovery? Um, I think what they get here oftentimes, especially if somebody's coming for the first time, mm -hmm. is just kind of getting a start in the process. And I think that idea, especially the one-on-one, -on -one, of being able to just process through their life to that point of what got you to where you are today yeah. um, and having an understanding of what addiction is and particularly the chemical they're using even though they're all addiction mm -hmm. there's some differences yeah. so understanding that and how that impacts them mm -hmm. um, for me it's also looking at kind of their physical health as well you know what have you done to potentially damage that mm -hmm. and what needs to be taken care of in that regard. Um, so just going through that journey till they feel like they're in a spot where they don't need the counseling anymore. And yeah. that can be anywhere from, I suppose maybe a half a dozen months, which is probably really short. Oh yeah. To, you know, a number of years. I've had clients um, probably since not too long after I started here. So I've had people up to five years. Yeah, I, I, was so that I would say one to three is probably not uncommon. Yeah. I would assume not all addiction. Everyone, no patient is the same. No, so, not really. A lot yeah. of similarities, but <laughs> they're all different, especially as to you know what got you here. Exactly. And for people that have a lot of legal component to that, what does that look like? But what about the other branch of drug treatment, and what happens if we cannot treat addicts? We interviewed a local police officer at the La Crosse Police Department. He could not be interviewed on camera, but he did leave us with some interesting closing thoughts. He shares sentiment in that he wanted to be able to treat addicted convicts while being incarcerated. The problem with this is that there isn't enough money in the correctional system to provide for these addicts. He, doesn't, he also doesn't like arresting addicts on drug possession charges as they can barely help it. It doesn't help that dealers continue to hide their operations by being able to make their product with simple and easy to use ingredients. He says that this issue will continue until we either have a massive crackdown of meth and lacrosse or we are able to treat every addict. 
In conclusion, this problem will only get worse as time passes, but as a community, we can help this issue and make lacrosse a safer place to live for all citizens here. My name is Macy Murphy, a student at Viterbo University. Thanks for watching.